Hello guys, in the introduction I did think I was going to be stopping at lenses but I've decided now to go on and just have a quick, uh, a quick look at Photoshop and to give you an idea of how you can use it to edit photos. So we're going to start here, uh, we're going to start off here with this separate picture. Now um, there's a lot of space around the edge so ideally I'd like to crop that out. So if we press C or click on this tool up here we've got the crop tool and we can just click where we want to start the crop and then drag it to where we want to finish it. And then uh, double click and we've cropped it out so from here I can I can see that the blacks are probably a bit too bright so I'm going to press Control M or we can also go to image adjustments and curves and this will bring up our curves graph now if we look at this uh, gray patch here this will actually tell us what colors we're using and uh, how bright or dark they are so the darkest parts are going to be down this end and the brightest parts, which are going to be the white parts, are going to be up this end. So um, it might not be obvious at first to see how this works, but basically all we need to remember is that if we drag this box here across to the right, it's going to make the picture it's going to make the dark parts of the picture darker. And then if we uh, use this one up here and bring it to the left, it's going to make the bright bits brighter. Okay, so as I was saying before, I think we need to boost the darks down a bit. So I'm going to drag that across to there and it's starting to look a bit better. Now if you want to put a bit of contrast in there we can make a kind of S shape by clicking on the curve and uh, dragging it up a bit and then uh, coming down to the lower part and dragging this down a bit and that's going to just boost it a bit and it makes a nice kind of little S wave on here so uh, we can see the difference that's made. Look at it a bit closer. Okay. So I'm quite happy with that now. So there we go, if we put them side to side, we can see that I've got rid of the wasted space we didn't need in the picture. And I've also uh, made the dark bits darker and I've just put a bit more contrast in there to give it a bit more of a punch. Now, if we look at the next picture, uh, this one here, I used actually used a filter on this, which has actually discolored it slightly. So I'm gonna tell you a quick little trick here, is to press Control, Shift and L and this will automatically uh, change the levels and it sometimes does a good job, sometimes does a bad job on this one it looks quite nice now I think um, if I press Control M I can go back into the levels and have a look and uh, see, uh, see what we've got going on now it's saying there's not a lot of, there's no whites after this point here so I could try dragging this across to there and we can see that's probably made the picture a bit better I think and again, if we put a little S in there to make it a bit more of a punch. There we go. And that's giving it a bit more vibrance and it looks a, it looks a bit better, I think. Um, it may still be a bit too red. So I'm going to click on this RGB box here and I'm going to click on the red. And I'm going to look at how I might be able to change the reds to make it less prominent in the picture. So I can bring this down slightly like that. And I'm going to bring this one down, and that's going to reduce the reds across the whole picture. So if I this end down here is going to reduce the ed, uh, the red in the dark parts, and up the top it's going to reduce the red in the uh, highlights, which are the brightest parts of the picture. Um, I think I've taken a bit too much out there. I'm just going to put that back like so. So we can now see um, it's quite a considerable difference there. So again, if we put the two pictures next to each other we can see the first one is discolored and very faded and the second one is a lot brighter it's got cleaner colors and then it's got more contrast in it too okay. and then for the last picture I've taken a picture of this crocodile uh, a little tip for you if you want to start photography um, reptiles are always a good thing to look into because they don't move a lot so I actually shot this at quite a slow shutter speed and um, I push up right against the glass. If you're shooting through glass, you can get a lot of reflection on it. If you can push the lens right up against the glass, it will actually eliminate reflection completely. But there's also a bit of distortion down in this corner here. It's not too major. I'm not too worried about that because the focal point is of the crocodile. And as long as around the eyes is in focus, I'm going to be happy with the picture. Now I'd like to show you another tool quickly. Um, it's not really important on this on this picture to be fair. but. Um, if we look at the clone tool, which is this little one here, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change it to um, 
about this size. So I've got it on 639 size here. It's not important. You can change this to suit how you want to do the picture. Um, and then you press Alt and you click. And this is going to be the part of the picture that we're going to copy. So we're going to so what we're going to do is we're going to try to get rid of this green blob in the background. Um, it's not terribly distracting, but um, just for the purpose of this project, I'm going to click on the uh, clone stamp tool here. And this is going to select the tool. Uh, we can go up here and change the size of the brush. I'm going to keep it 639 for this. And uh, hardness will just change um, how fuzzy an area it is around the edge of the brush. So um, if I come over here, here for example you can see the uh, edge is really fuzzy uh, if I change it down you can see you've got a really clear cut edge now with cloning I always like it to be fuzzy so I'm going to make it as fuzzy as possible there we go and that is how fast we do that using the hardness here okay so once we've um, got the brush size we want and uh, the feather of the edge we like we can then hold down alt and this will choose a selection of the picture we want to copy and then we click and then uh, we come back to the other old cursor and then um, we can see now I've got the black area selected and I want to get rid of the green area so I can just literally just drag over there and that's got rid of the uh, green area. It might be easier to see what's going on if I do a bit on the picture. So say we like the eye here, I'm going to hold down alt and click on the eye and then um, we can now see where we want to paint the eye in and I can actually just start painting like this and it will copy them over. So it's not a very practical thing to do in that case because uh, it looks a bit odd. But for the last case, we can see we actually get rid of something rather than put something extra in. I hope that's clear. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that by pressing Control Z and we're gonna get back to editing this picture the same way we did the last one. So what I'm gonna do is press Control M to get up the uh, curves graph. I'm gonna move the square in the bottom to the edge of where the gray uh, histogram goes. And then I'm going to move the uh, whites across to where the other end of the greys go. Um, now this is quite bright on the picture here, so I'm not going to put much of a curve in because that's going to really push it up. I'm actually just going to drop down the darks a bit. And now if we want, we can make the background really dark. Uh, so this bit here is all going to be pretty much black. So if I drag that right across, we're going to get a very black background. Um, depends what you like uh, for me that's a bit too much so I'm gonna pull it across this way a bit although I like a dark background I don't want it to be completely black and then I'm gonna put that little S shape in the graph again and that's really giving the picture a bit of punch now there we go okay guys I'm gonna press Control U and I'm gonna put just a little bit more color in uh, you can see it's barely made a difference but you can um, around the eyes in particular you can see the yellow and I quite like that so I'm going to press OK, and if now where I shot through glass, it's not quite as sharp as I'd like. So I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, and click on Sharpen. And uh, it's very hard to see on the screen, but that's just made the picture look a little sharper. So um, it'll give you a little bit of grace, but if the picture is quite a bit out of focus, sharpening it on here is just not going to work. So if we put the pictures next to each other, we can now see the difference. The first one's really faded, and the second one is a lot brighter and a lot more contrast, and looks much better quality. So this is a nice way to finish. I'm going to leave you with that. So this should really take your pictures into the next level now. If you understand all the technical side of using the camera, when we drop it into Photoshop, we can really make the most of that, and we can really push it to the limits. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this series and I, it should have taken you from knowing nothing about photography to being able to take a picture like the ones I have on the screen at the moment. Now if this playlist is successful, in my next videos I'll show you how to take a good picture and turn it into a great picture by looking at different things we can do. And I'm just going to mention uh, some other videos I've got. If you have fun taking photos, uh, on Facebook we can now make 3D pictures and there will be a link to uh, a video of how to actually make 3D pictures in Facebook if it's something that sounds fun to you. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the series. Until next time.